Hello and welcome to Education in Focus, powered by Chalkboard News. I'm Dan McCaleb, Vice President of News and Content at the Franklin News Foundation, which publishes ChalkboardNews.com. Chalkboard is a news website dedicated to issues related to K-12 education. A new survey from Pew Research Center asks teachers and students about their experiences amid significant cultural divides around gender, race, sexual orientation. Joining me today to discuss the survey is Chalkboard's K-12 editor, Brendan Clary. Brendan, tell us uh, what you saw in the results. Yeah, Dan, this is really striking uh, to me. Given how much I've written about some of these cultural issues that have played out in school boardrooms, um, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of hot hot button issues, right? We have race, racial issues, right, of of critical race theory that's been outlawed in, in, you know, a number of states, right, where they've banned language on divisive topics, and that would include critical race theory or um, different things about race, sexuality, gender, those are the, the divisive issues, like the hot button topics. And those have come up time and time again. You know, we've, we've ta- written a lot about a chalkboard, uh, some of the content moderation, book banning, uh, as, as, you know, critics of that, like to call it, in the proponents of it, you know, say we're just trying to remove what we say is sexually explicit material out of school libraries, like publicly funded school libraries should not have, you know, this sexually explicit material in there. And so, you know, they're saying it crosses a line. And so that's that's kind of the the debate, and it's been fought uh, all through 2023. I mean, there's been some advocacy organizations that have, you know, kept enough, like have tried to keep track of of which uh, titles have been removed from those libraries and have been challenged. And you know, that's a very different number, right? Uh, a lot of times they're challenged, and you know, they go under review, and then a lot of parents or teachers will say, "No, this is fine. We're going to leave this in here." So you got to kind of be be wary of of some of the the numbers or some of the hype around that. But I mean, th- it's been talked about a lot, right? And then also we have gender notification policies. So there, there's a lot of hot button issues, right? And but this this. Uh, survey, you know, it basically asked teachers, and then it also there's there's a couple of different surveys in there, but one one of them was specifically toward teachers, and it asked them, you know, what do these current debates, specifically around gender and race, what kinds of impact do these have on your job? Fifty three percent of teachers said this does not have any impact on on my job. So you know, over half, and then the rest, a lot, there a lot of the remaining teachers said this is a very negative thing. So that this does wear down on them, and you know that this would this would impact their their job performance significantly. So I, I thought that that was kind of startling. You know, we we've seen a lot of of reporting, a lot of talking about you know how this affects teachers, what they're able to talk about and not talk about. You know, so over half of teachers saying this is not you know really affect me on the day to day, and you know, so it, it could be you know there's some some teachers that are sort of caught in the crossfire here. They have to try to teach content that maybe, you know, in history or social studies, and maybe they have to try to navigate that a little bit more carefully. Anecdotally, I've heard that from some teachers or some professional development folks in Florida that, you know, a, a bill that bill called by critics, you know, the don't say gay bill that kind of limits the discussions that can happen in classrooms around uh, gender identity uh, and sexual orientation, that that can limit, you know, some of the discussions that they have, or, you know, different things about that. And so there are some some district policies and statewide policies that kind of, uh, you know, maybe you have to, to tread a little bit differently after it was enacted. So it's just an interesting, you know, kind of codifying what we've heard and putting down, you know, what we've heard into data, right? That a number of teachers, the majority of teachers, a lot of them, 71% said uh, they don't actually have enough influence over what's taught in public schools in the area. So that, you know, the, the government has sort of too much of a say, you know, that there's not enough leeway for individual teachers to talk about they, what they want. Also, and I'm happy to talk about this more, Dan, it was just really interesting. A lot of students said that, that they shouldn't be learning about gender identity in school. So I thought that that was a very interesting finding that 48% of teens said that they shouldn't learn about gender identity in school. And so that that's young people saying, you know, this shouldn't be included in my curriculum. So there were some surprising findings there. I think that, you know, these teens recognize almost half said, you know, this shouldn't be taught. The survey results are certainly interesting, Brennan. Going up back up to your first comment about teachers. So even though 53%, small majority, slight majority of teachers saying that debates about these cultural issues like race and gender identity, they don't impact their ability to do their jobs. 41% say it does. And and I would, even though there it's a less than a majority, 41% is a significant number. How many students are these teachers teaching where their job is impacted because you know these cultural issues have been thrust into these schools. I know that's an impossible question uh, for you to answer, Brendan, but it, it does mean that tens of thousands of students are impacted uh, because their teachers are impacted. 
Did Pew offer any analysis about to what, what these survey results mean? For example, those 41% of teachers who say their jobs are impacted. What, I mean, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I think, I think that that's a great question. I mean, I think they didn't offer any of this. So the, the hard part with these kind of surveys is that it's, it's sort of raw data, right? This is what people are, this is what the uh, teachers are saying. You know, this is, this is the, what they're reporting. It's not really clear, you know, how it's affecting them, right? I'm not sure if it's like, you know, this is, they feel like uh, maybe an emotional t- toll or is it, you know, they feel like they can't actually have these conversations or, you know, do they feel like this is affecting some of their students who maybe identify with like a sexual minority, you know? So it's hard to say exactly what that feels because I think I think that, you know, there's some some wiggle room there. Of what does that mean, right, for this impact? So that the specific language is that percent of public K-12 teachers who say that the current debates on how public K-12 schools should be teaching certain topics like race and gender identity have had a negative or no impact or positive impact on their ability to do their job. So that's that's pretty broad, you know, their, their, just their ability to do their job. I thought uh, sort of related to this, you know, the, the breakdown, they did see the breakdown of sort of the political views of teachers. So that was an interesting thing that came up, I think, is that they asked teachers essentially, you know, what what is the likelihood that something comes up in your classroom? And uh, 67% of Democratic and democratic leaning teachers versus 43% of republican and republican leaning teachers say that uh, topics related to racism or racial inequality come up at least sometimes in their classroom and then 36% of democratic teachers versus 21% of republican teachers say the same thing about sexual orientation and gender identity that it comes up at least sometimes in their classroom so if if uh, if a teacher is democratic or democratic leaning they're more likely to have conversations around gender identity or uh, race, racism, or racial inequality. So that that is some some of those kinds of things. And again, you know, is it that you know if you live in a more democratic controlled area, like a bigger city, that that is going to come up a little bit more? You know, maybe. So th- th- there are some of these things that we just don't know because of you know there are different causes and effects, right, Dan? So I, I think that it's kind of hard to parse out exactly what's going on there. But it's, it is you know it is an interesting thing to look at and to sort of to sort of try to conceptualize. Well, thank you, Brendan, uh, for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at chalkboardnews.com. He ran for state office and was beaten, started a business and failed, ran for Congress and lost. But thankfully, Abraham Lincoln didn't give up. Persistence. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com.